Hello, impulse purchase demons. It's me, ya boy. Hi friends, hi. My name is Mia and this is my virtual vanity, a place where we both love makeup and we're quite critical of it. If you'd like to see more makeup, head on over to my Instagram where I post looks, flat lays of the products I'm currently loving or testing out and dank memes in the story. Today, I want to talk to you guys about my update for my beauty budget in June and July. I always procrastinate these things, usually because another video idea comes to mind and it's quite time sensitive, or I've already got something filmed and I'm lazy and that one takes less time to edit. Um, so yeah, here I am in August with two months worth of updates and um, boy, this one is a doozy. June, I feel, was a really, really good month budget-wise. I initially didn't plan to buy anything. I was like, you know what? I have so much shit already. Let's take a break. Let's take a breather. I also had a period where, honestly, I was kind of over buying anything new. At a certain point at the beginning of June, it started to feel like that old song and dance. Like, I'm buying because... I know I'm allowed to buy as opposed to I want to buy. There was this sense of artificial type of scarcity where I felt like why well, I have to buy because this is my budget and if I don't take advantage of the budget this month, well maybe next month, I don't know what I was thinking truly. It was a very weird sensation for me to be over the act of purchasing but not initially over the act of using makeup and that actually gave me a really good idea for a video which i'm drafting working on i've learned my lesson from my how american consumerism influences international vanities and i'm not going to try to follow a set script because um, I've got literally two functioning brain cells and one of them is busy keeping me breathing The other one is busy keeping me talking. I don't have a spare one to memorize a script I, I have to know my limitations here. I really want to deep dive into the feeling of having buying makeup as a hobby versus using makeup as a hobby because I do feel that once you get really involved into this beauty sphere you start to confuse and conflate the two it starts becoming this big blur of wanting to purchase but not actually giving an enough attention to what you actually have and thus the um, focus that you're placing on regarding your vanity and your makeup usage is rather towards the purchasing of makeup rather than its consum consumption as and using it as a creative outlet but we're not going to get this started here I initially didn't plan to buy anything, yes, and then Beauty Bay had a sale for two items that had been on my wish list for months and they were quite expensive, so I was like, okay, fuck it, um, I don't want to buy anything, but I really don't want to pay like 10, 15 euros more when these go back to full price. It was a really good sale. I got the Nabla Skin Glazing in Ozone, which I had wanted ever since it came out. This is a very high shine, high glass mirror type of highlight that can also be diffused for a more um, subtle look, but I really wouldn't call this a subtle highlight at all. This is not a natural highlight. You can basically make yourself look like a glazed rotisserie chicken very easily. That's the look I'm going for, but if you're more of a, you know, just a teensy bit of glow type of girl, might not be for you. Really, really like like this formula. I think they just surpass themselves. I am forced to continue standing Nabla. Another item was the soap blushes, the Cover Effects Blush Duos. I wanted this since it came out. Like, when did it come out? Like a year ago, a year and a half ago. It's been a while, but I could never excuse. The price. These little shits are quite expensive. I initially planned to get the pink duo in Pink Dahlia, but then I checked Temptalia to see if there were any dupes because they do have an unhealthy blush collection. And that seemed quite similar to the Patrick Tashi's Passionate Blush that I had got a few months ago. So 
So I went for the shade Soft Peach because I'm really into peach uh, shades at the moment. The warmer my hair gets, so the more it goes towards a red type of dye situation, the more I go towards greens and yellows and peaches and oranges because they somehow become much more flattering on this is a very beautiful formula quite pigmented i wouldn't say that this is idiot proof i would advise using this with a blush brush that isn't very densely packed so you can have a bit of leeway i like mixing the two shades together just a beautiful formula all around really it blends really easily it's just that because of the high pigmentation levels when you first put the brush on your cheek that's where it's gonna deposit the most so as i said something that has a bit of a loose bristle situation something a bit more airy is going to help avoid that if you've got like a heavy hand or something one of my real life friends is quite into makeup as well and she's got like this look fantastic box type of situation it's like a, a boxy charm type. she decluttered some items to me that she received in that box the uh, urban decay petite heat palette which i've become to really enjoy i actually had a dupe for the naked heat that was from makeup revolution that i decluttered a while ago because the formula was beautiful but frankly i wasn't using it enough and it was taking up space in my vanity this one is so tiny and so compact that i really don't mind it and i've been finding myself using those shades more and more as like a companion matte palette so i've been really enjoying that uh, she also decluttered to me a mini of the benefit hula light which i initially didn't think was doing much of anything so this is like this is light it, it's exactly what it says on the tin i have to go with quite a heavy hand to make it show like i feel like i piled it on today but it doesn't really look like i'm wearing much bronzer at all let's face it we've been housebound i've been a house ghoul for months now so it's not like i've got like a little bit of a tan and that's affecting it no i'm whiter than i was in the winter my skin is quite translucent it's quite transparent the paler i get the more you can see my veins underneath my skin specifically the um chest and boob and arms area like i think you can even see like i'm a phlebotomist's dream as i am at the current moment it, it, it i don't like it i don't like looking like an uh, anatomy figure I googled why are veins visible on the breasts and then I was thinking, oh, it's just gonna tell me that I have thin skin or something. No, fucking cancer. I'm pretty sure I don't have cancer, Google. No. No, I'm pretty sure I'm not pregnant and I don't have cancer either. And I'm not, I'm not gonna trust Google ever again. My point was that I am quite pale and I do have to go quite heavily with this bronzer. It's dummy proof because of that. Blends really easily. It's really nice. But this is um this or lighter is the the only type of skin tone situation that that's going to work for so if you are interested in it i would suggest going into the store and giving it a swatch just to make sure that it's gonna work for you another thing that i got in june that i was really excited about for a bit of context i was allowed to get palettes once every two three months something like that nonetheless I only purchased one palette this year and that was the Natasha Denona Sunrise and so I was overdue buying another palette but nothing interested me it was quite easy for me to talk myself out of everything that even remotely caught my eye until a Facebook ad caught my attention so this uh, Romanian brand Forever Lash were advertising their sale on Facebook and I was like you know fuck it let's just check out their site let's see if i can support a local business and get something shiny while doing so and i got myself a force and you can see how beautiful and iridescent and the, the the shifting in the colors in these is just amazing and i also got three high sparkle pigments 
Listen, these are absolutely gorgeous. I plan on getting more from this brand sometimes in the future. And I'm really happy that I got to support something local because I do feel that there is a, a lack of local homegrown makeup brands that these are gorgeous. These uh, have very interesting shifts. They can be used on their own and as toppers. They have a very interesting texture to them where they feel almost like a ColourPop Super Shock shadow, just a bit creamier, a bit more emollient. What I found with these is that unless you use glitter glue, they don't have that great of a staying power, maybe five or so hours before they start to crease, but they're honestly so beautiful that I don't mind. I think it's because they aim towards more a um, professional makeup artist type of audience where you would wear the makeup for a shoot, for something like that, and so you don't need it to last eight hours. But really beautiful, I'm really happy with my purchase. Uh, this was one of my safe purchases of the years, of the year by far. It's, it's very special to my heart. The pigments do have more staying power, but I do feel that this is because I use them quite layered. So primer, mattes, base, glitter glue, then the pigment, and they are so special, so shifty, so multi-dimensional that the camera just doesn't do them justice. I try to get it on video, it doesn't do it justice. I try to get multiple photo angles, it just doesn't do them justice. It just doesn't. I want to share how pretty they are with the world, but you can only see it in real life light conditions, and it annoys me. For clothes, I was really good, stuck to my budget. Reserved, which is my favorite clothing brand, had sales. I can buy from both the menswear section and the women's wear section. Listen, I could have a whole TED talk about how men's wear clothing is superior, especially for basics. If, if you're a bigger chested girl like myself and you have a, a you know, a good waist to hip ratio, you know how hard it is to find shirts that have a relaxed fit but don't make you look like you're a little box on legs. If you go to the menswear section and you grab a smaller or two times smaller size than you would regularly wear, that's a game changer. Because those fits account for men having wider backs and wider shoulders, so the titties, the girls if you will, have space to frolic without being suffocated and then the tapering of the t-shirt sits really nicely on your waist. Same with winter clothing. I got myself a coat for the men, from the menswear section. I've not been cold once all winter, whereas previously with women's wear coats, I had to layer and layer and layer or stuffer. I love invading the menswear section. I'm taking their clothes, consider it payback for us not being able to vote for like literally millennia. So, to get back to my initial point, they had sales and I got myself uh, some very wide, not, I, don't, I wouldn't say palazzo, but very wide fit very pants that are striped and have a very dark color. They are so incredibly flattering on my ass, but I, I'm not 100% on how they look from the front. They're incredibly stylish, but I feel that they make my hips look quite boxy. So they force me to wear something fitted on top to give my body again some shape and some dimension. They're really comfortable though. It's like you're wearing nothing. And I paid $17 for those on sale. And I also got myself a white sweater from the menswear section in a S size, which is just a wee bit big on me, but it works, it's beautiful. It's, it's got like this ribbed type of fabric to it and it's really thick and cozy and warm. And I've been wanting to get a white sweater ever since I saw A Discovery of Witches, the TV adaptation, and I fell in love in love with Diana's wardrobe. And while the shades of blue that she wears unfortunately make me look 
like I am one step away from death and or puking my guts out. I really like the, just the, the overall color palette of the show. I really am 100% convinced that that show sparked my love of peachy neutral makeup looks because she's quite a no makeup makeup type of girl. So I've been obsessing over getting a white thick non-transparent sweater which you would think is an easy thing to get but alas no the man's the woman's wear section insists on providing us rags so it took me a good year to find this and i'm really happy i did i'm living my best a discovery of which is aesthetic vibes and that was also 17 dollars so yeah june was good June was good, it was completely on budget, everything went fine, and then July happened. I fucked up. I fucked up. Oh, I fucked up. For context, in July or so, they started letting us go back in the office. Stores and shops started reopening. We were fresh out of of quarantine out of isolation we had little very little cases at the time and things were really looking up i started going in the office every wednesday to send out hardware to uh, check the different rooms that were there just you know regular um it support shit that i had to do i have a, a shopping mall right next to my workplace when i started my budget before the quarantine i knew that i have to avoid that shopping mall at all costs because i tend to get lost in shopping malls in the sense that i go into a shopping mall for me is a very sensorial type of experience i enjoy looking at the patterns at the colors feel the fabrics in my hand even if i don't intend to buy anything somehow something shiny catches my eyes or i like the feel of a certain fabric and i go into the store because i'm an idiot with no self-control so i knew at the time that if i wanted to buy stuff that's when i go to the mall and i go to the mall once a month and that's it and we went back into the office i decided to visit the mall a friend dropped by at the same time and she was like let's go to the mall let's have some fun i think i got lulled into a hypnotic state by the fact that it felt so normal even though i had like gloves and a mask on it felt so normal to be able to go to the mall with a girlfriend and chit chat and admire all of the pretty things i am noticing now that the language that i am using to refer to this takes a bit responsibility away from me so i was lulled into i was hypnotized it's not my intention but i think that i am subconsciously trying to alleviate the guilt that i felt for fucking up the way i did by externalizing the fault and i should not be doing that the fault was entirely mine going into a shopping mall does not mean that all of my willpower gets erased i am not being hypnotized all of the decisions that i took in that mall were mine and mine alone what i can acknowledge is that it triggered a habit response in me which i should have avoided i read the book the power of habit a while ago and the very interesting thing that i got from that book that really helped me was that habits are formed in a cycle the cycle goes as this the habit trigger so what triggers you to do the habit the situation the input then the habit behavior the completion of the habit the result a period of lull rinse and repeat habit triggers can be anything such as i'm feeling bored at work so my habit response will be to grab a snack or i'm in a mall and my habit response is to go into every store and purchase something and the key to breaking a habit is to change the way you respond to the habit trigger or to avoid the habit trigger altogether. It's a constant battle of wills and trying to rewrite cognitive patterns in your mind. And so I was vulnerable to what happened in the shopping mall because one, I did not realize that I would fall into a cognitive pattern that I should have known 
was going to happen I did not realize that after months of not exercising my willpower regarding that particular habit trigger I would not even I would not even process it I would just follow through with the habit cycle that was my mistake I'm not gonna buy any clothes for August maybe even September because of the the damage that I did in that mall I need to hold myself accountable I entered the mall and makeup wise I did I did really good didn't purchase one single thing at the time clothing wise though oh it was bad first of all I went into H&M because that's when where my friend wanted to go H&M generally is fast fashion but I had heard only good things about them during this quarantine that they were gonna pay their workers that they were gonna help everyone keep their jobs spoiler alert it's more complicated than that but at the time at the time I knew that H&M as far as a fast fashion brand went they tried to do good by their supply chain so I had absolutely no guilt going into the store I got myself a very pretty mustard type of blazer that I envisioned myself wearing into work I got a pair of stripy pants that made my ass look amazing really good prices I got both of these on sale I don't even remember how much I paid for them like my mind was so fried I don't even remember how much I paid for them and then my friend uh, said let's go into other shops I was like yeah sure let's go let's go into other shops I bought two pairs of pants from Bershka and one uh, shirt I finally snapped out of it when I was with these bags in my hands and I was like hey shit I have a budget to uphold what the f fuck am I doing I am letting the guilt come and flow through me I shall not guilt. Guilt is the mind killer. Guilt is a little death that leads to total obliteration, annihilation. I don't remember the exact quote. I am going to try to learn a lesson from what happened this month. I'm going to try and be aesthetic with my purchases for September and um, August because God knows I don't need any more clothes. I really do not. I'm going to try and reassess again my relationship with fast fashion. Because as much as I would love to be more conscious with my purchasing, it was far too easy for me to go into those fast fashion stores and buy shit and dismiss all of my concerns about their ethics just because I read one article that they were gonna do good but their supply chain. Then I went home and googled. I was like, am I feeling guilty for nothing? Or is H&M really taking care of their supply chain? I would love to support brands that actually take care of the people under them. There is no ethical consumption in capitalism, true, but we can go towards brands that actually try to make an effort to keep their supply chain safe during a pandemic, and I don't feel these brands did that. So I feel really bad, but the damage is already done. The products are already purchased. At the time, I was not aware of what was happening. That is it. It happens. Shit happens. Makeup wise, again, it was a bit of a month of excess, but not entirely intentional. Nabla came out with skin glazing blushes and skin glazing bronzers. And so I did an order for two of those. I got the blush, blush in a Lola, which is a very beautiful, fresh rose pink, beautiful, flawless, seamless, blendable formula. While it is quite intense in the pan, when you first apply it on, the, on uh, the cheeks, it's subtle and then you can build it up. So it's very versatile. I also got the Nabla Skin Bronzing Powder in Dune. I got scared when this arrived to me because it looks um, quite dark compared to me and the swatch looks quite dark as well. I bought this because of Mariah Leonard, not gonna lie. This is again a very buildable, dummy proof, blendable formula. Looks very intense in the pan and you can build it up to this shade if you're so inclined but the very first layer that you apply to the skin is light and airy, blends right in, doesn't look really that obvious unless you want it to be. Later during the month 
I started realizing that the mascaras that I had been keeping since quarantine started, so uh, six months because I'm a disgusting human being with no regard for my uh, eye health, started to sting my eyes. So I tossed those and I went to buy myself a mascara. It is what it is, I need the mascara, I'm not here to torture myself, I'm not here to be a, a makeup monk. I need the mascara, I'm gonna get myself a mascara. I got the L'Oreal Volume Million Lashes in the variant excess. This is, this is just fine. I wish I had just repurchased the Milk Kush Mascara, but I was afraid to go to the mall again. <laughs> I, I was really afraid to the mall to again, so I just went to the drugstore. This is, is a bit clumpy, it's very black. Um, it doesn't smudge. However, don't like how it has a tendency to clump to the lashes and it doesn't curl at all. And it's not that volumizing. But I think I, I was spoiled by the Milk Kush Mascara and the Lancome Monsieur Big, which are my holy grails. And they're on a whole other level. Honestly, I don't recommend this. You can find better at the drugstore. Another makeup purchase that I honestly did not realize was makeup was the Dr. Papa Tinted Pe Peach Pink Balm Multi-Purpose Soothing Balm with Natural Papa with a hint of a tint. And I thought this was going to be a bit of a lip balm type of situation and I don't really count lip balms as makeup. They're just things I put on my lips to keep hydrated. This is, this is pigmented. I used it in my latest art inspired Shop My Stash and bro, this thing packs packs a punch. Doesn't have a great staying power unfortunately and I don't really like how it looks on the lips. I don't get why they're calling this a balm. This is not a balm. This is a cream multifunctional blush lip tint type of situation. I honestly thought that it was going to, to be something like Lano lips, you know, where you have those peach balms like a hint of something but they're not actual makeup products this has a lot of pigment in it so yeah th this month was a fucking disaster and then my friend from before declutter more things from her beauty box which i'm honestly really grateful because it gives me the occasion to try some things that i wouldn't have tried otherwise and she decluttered to me this sleek matte lipstick in bittersweet very pretty color not something that i would have purchased on myself but it's really handy nowadays underneath the mask I do need to apply a generous amount of lip balm before because it is quite drying. And she also gave me Benefit Minis, Dandelion and Dandelion Twinkle, which I had before and I've actually depotted. Um, so I just put hers in like a box, like as a backup or to give forward to a friend or something like that. And then the Dream Rush Mini, which I don't understand what that is supposed to do. It does nothing. It shows up as nothing. I really appreciate that she gave those to me because actually the Dandelion Twinkle and the Dandelion I really, really enjoy. I'm working on panning them. Another friend decluttered to me her Juvia's Tribe palette because she wasn't using it enough. Um, I'm not gonna lie, the pan sizes give me anxiety. I promised myself that I was never going to buy any other Juvia's palette because of the pan sizes, but these tones go so so well with my red hair and the formula in this palette is gorgeous so i'm really grateful to her for decluttering things to me um i'm really happy that i have i don't have many friends that are into makeup in my real life just two but we do give things uh, to one another speaking of giving things to one another in july i did a palette declutter I didn't film it because I do feel that sometimes on YouTube you get pressured to declutter things that you wouldn't usually just to have a good video. And I didn't want that to happen. I paid, I paid good money for this shit. I wanted to declutter it at my own pace. I decluttered a bunch of palettes and already sold most of them on a local reselling Facebook group. Three beauty glazed palettes. Great quality but I was never using them and that is because the pigmentation is great, the blendability is great, I've actually got a review up on them and I did enjoy them. The problem is that what I like are gauzy, blendable mattes. These were high pigment, high impact mattes. Whenever I wanted a pink or a blue or a green, those weren't the palettes I was pulling for. So I 
disinfected them and passed them on to someone that would give them more love. Two palettes from NYX, NYX Grind and NYX Ignite. Beautiful palettes. I was so excited to get them when they came out in Romania. I used them to death for like a month and then forgot about them. I decluttered yet another palette and that was the OPV Yemoja, which I forgot to mention in the video. And I gave it to the friends that gave me the beauty box stuff. So we, we did a little bit of an exchange. The thing with this palette is that it is gorgeous quality. I have a review of it up as well. Has some fallout, but nothing major. It's just that I, I never used it because of the pan sizes and because I had other similar colors to what it had in smaller sizes, other palettes that I used more often. So I have to keep reminding myself to use it just like with the NYX palettes. So listen, am I happy with how this month went? No, I am disappointed and upset with myself, but I need to get over it. It was a learning experience, but I, I wish that I had been perfect and an outstanding role model. But then the, the, the purpose of these videos is not for me to be perfect. And the purpose of this budget is to be better, not perfect. And if I don't fuck up and discuss it and it's just me giving update over update over update of just sticking to it i guess it's maybe not as useful because there is no introspection to be had if i don't fuck up from time to time so i'll just i'll just take that as a lesson that's it guys that was my update for these two months I am really um, excited to see what August and September will bring. I know for sure I'm not getting out of the house anytime soon aside from that Wednesday. I was really hopeful but after that initial period when we had like 50-70 cases per day so really nothing compared to our population, Romanians decided to be stupid fucking uncultured baboons and not wear masks and go to the seaside and don't mind social distancing rules so now we're at a thousand cases per day we are officially fucked thank you guys so so much for watching i love to hear what you guys purchased in these last two months if you have any joys any regrets stuff like that i hope you guys will have a wonderful evening morning second breakfast third lunch or whatever it is where you're from bye